Now in the last two lectures we have seen that how to open and close browser, how to navigate to a URL and we have seen what is HTML document. Now it is time to access different types of elements on this HTML document. So for that I have this HTML document with me or a simple web page where I have created a text box, a combo box, a radio button, a checkbox and a button. So you can see that this page is on my local and it is not hosted anywhere. Now to identify the locators for these elements we need to go to more tools and then developer options. In the developer options we have an inspector here on the top left corner which you see as an arrow. You need to click on this and then you can click on the element that you are targeting. It will show you the code for that particular element. So we can see here for this text box it is actually an input tag with id usr and its name is uname. Right, so we need to find a locator for this. We can see that we have various methods to access this element. So we'll be talking about the first method which is get element by id. Since that element was having the id, so I prefer that method. So I just need to pass on that id which was usr and then what I need to do is I need to set the value for this particular text box. So I use value property and I assign it a value let's say my name. Now since in the very next statement we have ie.quit so we won't be able to see what is written in the text box. So therefore I am putting a wait of let's say 5 seconds so that we can actually see whether it has typed in that text box or not. So you can see that the browser was opened and it was able to write to the text box and after 5 seconds it has closed the browser. So we were successfully able to write to the text box using get element by id method. Now let us jump on to the next method which is get elements by name. Now remember that get element by id method is not having s after the element and it returns only single element. But the other functions for example get elements by name it return you set of elements or you can say array of elements. So you can see in the name itself we have get elements by name and not element by name. Now I am passing on the name which is uname for this particular element. Now I am not sure whether I will be getting one element or not but I know that I want to access the first element. And to access the first element from that collection what you need to give is you need to provide the index. So I am putting 0 here and then I am setting dot value equals Kamal Gidra. If I run the same code you can see that I am still able to write to the text box using get elements by name. So we have so far studied what is get element by id and what is get elements by name. Moving on to the next element type which is a combo box which is actually a drop down list. And before automating any such type of element what you need to do is you need to go to the HTML part of it and try to observe what type of elements we have. So we can see here it is a select tag with id equals color selector and it has various option tags under it with values of different colors. Now to access this element what you need to do is you need to reach to that select tag first and on the basis of that we can select any particular element under it. So since we have id for this particular element again we can use the same method that we have used for identifying the text box. So I am using get element by id. So id. I provide the id which is color selector for this element and then we use the method dot selected index to select a particular element at that index. So selected index equals the index number of that element. So if I use 3 here let's see the drop down. We have red, blue, green and purple. The index starts from 0 and for red it is 0. So the element at index 3 is actually purple. Let us run the code and see whether it is able to select purple or not. So you can see it has selected purple. So I assume that now it is clear that how we can access a text box and how we can make selections in the combo boxes. Now next we are talking about radio buttons. Now radio buttons are very easy to handle. What you need to do is you just need to select the element and then you need to perform click operation on it. So we can see here in the HTML that we have the ID for that particular radio button. So I again use get element by ID method. So I provide mail as the ID if I want to click on mail radio button. I use the method dot click to click on that particular radio button. You can see here by default it has not selected anything but if I scroll down here you can see mail is selected. Similarly, we can use the same method to click on checkboxes. You just need to pass on the locator and then you can perform click operation on them. Now the next technique is very important and the logic is very important to understand. What we are going to do is we are trying to inspect the locator for this submit. 
and we are going to perform click operation on that. So you can see here for this submit button we have the type and the values and we have the tag name as input. Now there are various other elements on the page which has the tag name as input and we are going to use the method get elements by tag name. Now if we use input as a tag name we will be getting multiple elements and not the submit button only. So now let us see in the DOM how many elements we have with tag input. So if you want to search or get the count of elements in the DOM for a particular tag what you need to do is here you just need to click on control F and then search with the tag name and before putting the tag name put double slashes. So double slash input is nothing but a X path which is going to return us all the elements on the page which has tag name as input. Now let us put a breakpoint here and try to run the code and we'll be adding a watch on this particular element to see what all properties do we have for this particular element. So I add a watch here and if I go to the watch window, I just expand it so that you can visualize what all things we have under it. So you can see here it has length of 8 that means there are 8 items under it and if I check for the 8th element if I scroll down a bit you can see here its value is submit so this is the actual button which we are targeting for the 8th element on the page. Now we cannot put the index as 8 here because tomorrow if you add another element in between your code would start failing so it is better that you put some other checks to perform action on that element. So for that what we do is we create a lms as object type and lm as object type. Alright so what I will be doing is I will be iterating through all the elements one by one and I will be checking whether that element has property which is value equals to submit or not. If it is submit then I will be performing click operation on it otherwise I will be simply skipping that particular element. So for each lm in elements lms is nothing but the set of elements that we have got using get elements by tag name method. So I put if lm.value equals submit then lm.click and once it finds the element and it performs click operation it simply moves out of the loop so therefore I put exit for. So if you run the code you would see that it would be clicking on the submit button. So here you can see the text form submitted successfully that means it has clicked on the button. So for now in this video we have spoken about get element by id, get elements by name, get elements by tag name and we have seen how to apply loop to iterate through various elements that are returned by that method and find the one that you are targeting for. So we still have other methods to learn for example get elements by class name and we will be seeing those later.